Welcome back for another episode of the 5G Guys. I'm Wayne Smith, and I'm joined by my co-host, Dan McBall. Hey, everyone. Welcome back for another episode. Great to have you. Thanks for being a long, long-time listener, a new listener, if you're new to the podcast. Today, we have our guest, Carrie Charles from Broadstaff. Carrie is the CEO and founder of, of Broadstaff. They're a national staffing firm that specializes in telecom and technology workforce solutions. She's also a thought leader on workforce trends, women in technology, and, and workplace diversity. And as a frequent keynote speaker for the industry in conferences, we thought she'd be a great a great host to have to, to talk about a topic that's come up from some of our listeners. We've had a few of you reach out and ask about how do I get into a career in wireless? It sounds interesting, and I'd like to do that. So we thought this would be a great opportunity to have carry on as a, a guest, and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in workforce in our industry and and some different roles that that we're that we're seeing a need for, and 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 how folks might be able to to pursue a career. So, uh, Carrie, thanks for coming on. Yes, Dan Wayne, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited. Awesome, awesome. Well, tell us a little bit more, I guess, about maybe your background in broad staff, and maybe that'll kind of kick us off into the discussion. Yes, yes. So it's interesting because I do have a little bit of a background in telecom. I was in the the Marines when I was younger. And I was in telecommunications in, in the Marine Corps. So that just, I guess, kickstarted the passion for telecom inside me. And then this opportunity for Broadstaff, you know, my business partner created Broadstaff. And then I came aboard just a couple months later and we started to grow it. But it, you know, we, we really wanted to, to focus in the area of telecom, not just on wireless, but also fiber and data center and really the entire ecosystem of telecommunications, which includes technology and IT as well, and also a lot of engineering, as we know. So we have been in business now seven years and we have over 350 employees and we're, you know, Inc. 5000 company three years in a row. And it's just been an awesome, awesome experience to, to serve the industry. Wow, that's awesome! You guys have been doing well. Thanks, thanks for your contribution to to the industry, as as evidenced by your success. Tell us a little bit. What are you, what are you seeing? I guess maybe to kick things off, what are you seeing going on in the telecom industry? Maybe even specific wireless right now with regard to workforce. What are what are some of the big challenges we're having? So, you know, I'll look at it from a micro or a macro level first. That you know we're experiencing issues really globally when it comes to workforce. And the, you know, the great resignation, which we've heard so much about, we've experienced it for the last 18 months where we've lost over 4 million people, okay, over 4 million people have left their jobs every single month for 18 months. Now, this has slowed down a bit currently, but still 40%, 40% of workers today are still thinking about leaving their job within the next six months. And that's even with the current economic conditions. So we also have to consider that the impact of the pandemic has, it's been an estimated that 4 million people are actually missing from the workforce. And that is is from, you know, obviously factors that include, you know, some have passed away, unfortunately. So, I mean, our, our, our work, for, millions of women have left, left the workforce and it's just been a real challenging time for us. Now, take that to telecom. Telecom is, you know, it's just, it just hasn't slowed down. It's been so busy. And yes, we, you know, it's cyclical and it goes up and down and it stop and go. And, you know, but, but really we are on fire and companies have, you know, have, have work booked out for months and even years to the future. So there's a lot to do here and we're missing the, you know, the workforce that can complete these projects. So, you know, leaders are, are in a space right now where, you know, they, they just need people desperately. And many, you know, many of them have, have been a little, you know, gun shy lately in the past quarter. This quarter has been a little bit slow. Some people are, are looking at their, you know, their teams and their workforce and saying, okay, do we really need this headcount? Do I really need to hire over here? You know, what's going to happen with the, you know, with the economy next year? You know, they're just being more careful with hiring this quarter. And so we have seen a slowdown. So typically, if you want to really know what's going on in the industry, you want to talk to a staffing company because we feel things first and like recession, right? Staffing companies feel recessions first. 
because we we feel that you know the, the the leaders and the companies pulling back a bit, and then we also feel it when we're coming out of a recession first because people start hiring and they start getting confident again. So where are we today? Uh, definitely, everyone we're talking to is still bullish. They're still busy. They're still a lot a lot of hope and a lot of excitement around 2023. But I do feel like there has been this lull in Q4 of this year. Yeah, that's really, I mean, that's really exciting. I mean, as a CEO, you probably read my mind on some of the thoughts that I have in our services company. Do we do it? But a question I think you bring up with the stats, you know, when we talk about the telecommunications infrastructure, how big a job pool is that? Is that a million jobs? Is that 3 million jobs? Have you ever kind of looked at it that way? You know, that's a that's a good question. I know that there's, I mean, it's in the millions for sure, that especially when it comes to technicians, right? Because what we're gotcha. facing now with, with telecommunications is is a, a massive shortage of technicians of all kinds, right? There's there's tower techs, there's field techs, there's cable techs, there's you know technicians and and you know repairers, and and it's that's the area that everyone is desperate for. So we've also heard that what's coming is a, a white collar recession, and that blue collar jobs are still going to be in high demand. I really feel like we're going to feel that in telecom as well. That we are still, I mean, we're still being having getting calls every single day. I will take as many crews as you can get for us. I mean, please help us, please, please, please. Okay, well, what about director of operations or you know project managers or VP of engineering? Well, you know, we may not need those right this minute, but bring on the crews. So we really feel that yes, how many jobs are out there? I mean, definitely in the millions, millions, but for sure. There are hundreds of thousands of tech jobs that are needed now and also into the foreseeable future. Well, yeah, I mean, there was there was some stats just on on the construction side, tower climbers alone, that there is somewhere in the order of like a twenty to thirty thousand worker shortage to support the influx of construction that's coming down the pipe with five G and and expansion and wireless. So, and that's just one small, you know, not small, but one fraction of of the types of workers that we have in our industry, right? That's just the construction side. So there you go. You know, multiply that times who knows four or five to get the total workforce demand that might be needed, right? Right. Absolutely. Hey, real quick, a quick word of thanks to today's sponsor, Vertex Innovations, before we get started. For over 17 years, Vertex has been building the nation's wireless and broadband networks, providing project management, network engineering, and construction oversight are just some of the ways Vertex helps their clients. So if you're looking for more of a partner to help you with your wireless network designs, construction, implementation, or operations, reach out to Vertex. You can find them at vertex-us.com. That's V-E-R-T-E-X-U-S.com. Let's talk a little bit about some of the types of careers in wireless to give people that are maybe new to the industry a sense for the types of, of workers that, that are needed. So I talked about construction. Obviously, we you know towers need to be built and things need to be hung on towers and foundations need to be dug. And so that's, that's a pretty obvious, I think, area that people would probably think of in terms of worker need. What, what other types of roles are there out there and, and, and that are in the meat of, of where you guys are helping to staff? So what I'd like to do is is really list the roles, some of the top roles that we staff for over the past year. And these are also going to be popular going into 2023 as well and for the foreseeable future with 5, 5G being deployed. So on the, you know, on the construction side, we've got project managers. We've seen an enormous demand for project managers in it, everywhere, fiber, wireless, everywhere, right? Again, assistant project managers as well. So really all levels there. Project coordinators. Again, we're still in the construction construction piece here. And then there's construction managers. We also have the, you know, in the field side, the concrete laborers, field engineers, field operations engineers, field technicians, OSP engineers. I mean, we have a, a very strong need for all of those skill sets throughout this entire year. Development specialists, site acquisition managers, and specialists. And on in the engineering side, there's been a high demand for CAD techs and CAD designers. Now, what's interesting about these roles is that we 
we actually have an entire engineering division. And that engineering division doesn't, you know, not only just places all types of engineers for telecom and then, you know, really other industries too, but we have an entire CAD tech team. And our clients, many of our clients require no experience for these CAD techs because they have a training program for them. So this is a nice entry point for someone who wants to get into telecom who doesn't have experience, but they have obviously the other skills and the character that's needed for these roles. The other piece that we're seeing, you know, a, a great demand is in the technology side of telecom, right? That's when we look at 5G and where, where telecom and IT collide. And they're, th these companies are looking for these resources that have that have you know the, the network capability cloud skills i was reading actually an article from amazon and it, the it talked about the time is right for recent graduates to develop cloud skills and they they stated that they think everyone everyone coming out of college or even really that is going to participate in the workforce of the future needs to understand cloud and have those skills so we're seeing a big uptake in or uptick in the demand for IT skills within telecom. And people are typically asking for a combination of the two, right? They want telecom and IT experience, or they want 5G technology, IT. So there's this, this convergence of skills that are that's coming together that not many people have. So we're looking at a handful of people who have all these skills, but then the demand is very high because of what's being built from a from a virtualization standpoint and so there's a massive you know opportunity for people to come in and have transferable skills and get trained and go into those roles got it you know we're we're a little notorious for analogies and for spelling out acronyms cuz we do have a lot of listeners that that don't know the industry. So I wanted to spell out a couple of, of acronyms that you were talking about. You talked about OSP. OSP stands for outside plant. When I've done a couple of topics, I'm sure you have on your podcast as well around how wireless needs wires, right? We have to have fiber optic cables that are going to all of these towers, to all these cell sites. So those are the engineers, OSP engineers and OSP technicians are basically facilitating that network, right? The building of those fiber networks and putting that stuff in the ground. Is that right? Yes. Yes, and thank you because I do. Once we, when I you know. get into telecom, you tend to just speak acronyms, right? We all do. I used to I used to give my clients for Christmas every year for the holidays. I don't, you guys remember the old telecom dictionaries? They were like an inch and a half <laughs> thick, and yeah, all the Newton. Was, yeah, and all it was was acronyms, right? It was an inch and a half thick book of nothing but acronym definitions. So we're we are notorious for that in this industry, aren't we? Right, right, yeah. for sure. And then as far as CAD, CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. So those CAD technicians, they're basically working on computer-based design systems, right? Drawing, like drafting drawings for whatever is being designed and built. Is that right? Yes. Yes, definitely. Awesome. Cool. You also talked about another, we went over it really fast, and let's, let's, let's dive into that aspect of the industry. You talked about site acquisition specialists. Explain to our, our listeners what a site acquisition specialist does and what site acquisition is? Yeah. So site acquisition is, I mean, it, it's really in the real estate world, right? It's, it's everything having to do with the, with the physical components of the network, right? It, whether it could be tower or small cells or, you know, the, just the, the person who is responsible for the actual site. So it's, it's a very sought, it's a highly sought after role and the the pay the compensation for these people has i mean it's just skyrocketed over the last 5 years that we can see so this is a very interesting area because it's almost combining some real estate knowledge experience or interest along with the telecommunications side as well and then there's entire companies that all they specialize in is site acquisition services for the telecommunications industry yeah that's, that's super interesting how these positions have been around for a while. You know, when you when you mention all of the technicians and the project managers, we're talking that these are high income positions too at, at the senior levels, correct? Like we're six figures. Have you have you guys seen the impact of I guess wage inflation through the industry this year? Has as wages went up for these roles or are they staying the same? Yes. So that's where the challenge begins for 
for companies, right? For construction companies and, and companies that are seeing that the wages are increasing and that they're potentially losing employees and candidates because other companies are paying them more, but their margins don't allow for them to increase their pay. And so it has been a real sore spot for our customers and it's been challenging. So yes, we have seen the wage, you know, wage pressures, wage increases, especially, especially in the last year, it's been excessive. I mean, what, one thing that we've been seeing more and more of are what we call drop-offs where we, uh, we have an offer to present to a candidate and they've got, let's say four or five other offers or maybe even one, or they go back to their current employer and the current employer says, no, don't leave us. We're going to give you an extra 20,000 a year and a bonus and all of this. So the, you know, the, the wage pressure is there and it's causing a lot of, it, it's just, it's, it's very difficult for companies who don't, who can't increase their margin and, you know, who can't excel, you know, and, and really keep these people with higher wages. Now, the, What's great about entering the industry, okay, for people who are listening that want to enter the industry or want to, you know, they want to look at roles in telecom is that, yes, there's money here. I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for higher salaries in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, you know, I know people who've started in telecom as project managers, tower climbers, technicians, just, you know, started there and become C-levels. I know two right now who one started as a tower tech and is now a C-level and the other one's a project manager who is now an EVP of a company. And I could just go on and on. I've actually had people on my podcast, 5G Talent Talk, that will tell these stories. So there's an incredible opportunity when you're starting at that entry-level space. The median annual wage for, for tele, telecom equipment installers and repairs in 2021 was $60,000. That was in 2021. So, you know, we're, we're looking at some, you know, some really nice opportunities for income for young people or even middle-aged or, you know, at my age, I don't, I don't know where I fall right now, but I just, you know, it's, it's really all ages can enter the telecom space. And again, when you are entering with no experience, that's a whole other conversation, but you can do it. Yes. Yeah. And I know a lot of the questions that I've gotten from people, whether it's listeners reaching out to us or just within my my profession and my career, a, a lot of people will ask, well, do I need to go to college to work in the industry? And the answer is, it depends, right? It depends on what you want to do. But to your point, my in my almost 30 years in the industry, I know a, a number of people that started at a an hourly, an hourly rate, you know, manual labor role within the industry, whether that's a construction or field tech or installer, and and are now working as C level executives within the industry. It's it's very common. I think some of the best engineers that I've had working for me over the years didn't go to school to become engineers. They may have gone to college. Some of them didn't. They graduated high school and they were just very good engineering thinking folks, and we were able to get them the training they needed. So. You know, don't let whether you've got a degree or not be a reason not to look into careers in the industry. But having said that, let's talk a little bit about what are some of the types of roles that having a degree is advantageous versus others that maybe it's not as necessary. Is that maybe something worth diving into a little bit? It is. You know, what I love about telecom is that experience is valued more than a bachelor's degree, a traditional bachelor's degree. And there are some companies, it's not necessarily the role necessarily, it's more the company has the qualification that they have to have a bachelor's degree, and then some companies don't. But I think what's very valuable are certifications and education. So there's the way I look at college, I don't have a college degree myself. I I don't have a traditional college degree. I believe in education. I've got a lot of certifications, right? We can talk about those for hours. But I do believe in education, and I believe that that is telecommunications and where we're going in the future is this experience and certifications go hand in hand. You know, and you talked about engineers and how some engineers don't have an engineering degree, and that's true. But I would say for the most part, the engineering opportunities that we have that are for true engineers, especially with PEs, you know, they do require degrees for, for, those, for those jobs. 
But for the most part, what, what we like to tell people is, look, find a trade school. There's so many trade schools. I mean, I found I could name 10 off right now. I won't. But one is telecom tech school. There's many different. You could really just Google telecom trade schools, telecom certifications. You, you, you know, just do some research and you could find so much opportunity to get these certifications and get training. Then you get the experience to go along with it and you go to an entry level position like we're talking about. And then you have on the job training. And yes, you're going to start at the beginning. We, we, you're not going to start in the middle. It's just, I mean, life is that way, right? We, we have to start somewhere, no matter, no matter what age we are. But there, you know, when you look at professional, when you look at these professional roles, such as director level roles and vice president roles and C-level roles, for the most part, those roles that we're seeing do have a college degree. For the most part, they do. Now, not always. Sometimes they don't. There's people who have work their way up and they've achieved those roles through experience. But I will say that if you have your sights set on those higher level leadership roles, that a college degree would be, you know, a leg up, if you will, right? It's not necessary, but it will be a leg up. Yeah. I think I would add that I don't have a college degree and I've been a CEO. I came from the trades and I would encourage You know, if you're a tradesperson out there listening on your way to work, to your job, that this is an industry that really correlates really well with the trades. And a lot of the acronyms that Dan and I use, you know, we talk about fiber infrastructure. It's like plumbing. You know, it's really built on the size of the pipe. And so there is there's a lot of opportunities for people who started in the trades to move themselves up. If you're an electrical person, a lot of opportunities there there and there's very simple similar industries in a sense on how you work. So I'm with you guys, you know, college is important. I've taken tons of training. I think, I think in order to make any career, you have to, to look at life and say, I'm going to be a lifelong learner. And because if we look at telecom and just, you know, our experience here, a lot of things that we used to do, we don't do anymore. And we have like that we're into this 5g and it's a whole new industry for the next 10 years of things that we thought we knew, but we really don't because they haven't developed yet. So I'd encourage any listener, if you have a trade, even if you're a graphic designer, you know, that can, the, the CAD is a good tie in. You already understand the basis of it. And it is a great industry. We've seen tons of people do well, you know, in my 20 years as CEO, go on to view do, do different things, BC level suites or vice presidents, project management. You can't say enough about it. I think every college personally, if you get a degree, you should have a project management piece of it because no matter what you do in life, you need those organizational skills. So I just wanted to throw that out there to all the listeners. If you're a trades person, this perfect industry for you. Yeah. One, one other thing, if I can add, that I, I just said that, you know, the leadership roles, those higher level leadership roles, typically we do see college degrees. However, if this is not something that you have or that you f- see yourself, you know, getting in the near future, don't worry. Just take leadership courses. Learn to be a leader. That's the most important piece because, like I said, in telecom, experience is valued, highly valued. But at the same time, they want to see that you have leadership experience, leadership training, you know, you've got the ability to be a leader and and you don't need to get that through a degree. So I, I, I definitely want to, you know, to give people hope that that don't have a degree. Again, there's just so many paths to success in telecom. Yeah, for sure. I, I myself am an elect- electrical engineering degree and I, you know, to your point, Carrie, like there are definitely specific roles that a degree is absolutely necessary, like many industries. And to your point, it's if you're getting into the heavy engineering side, whether it's a radio frequency engineer, right, structural engineer, you, you can't have someone designing a tower to make sure it doesn't fall over unless they have structural engineering experience from a degree standpoint. So for sure, if you're a civil engineer or electrical engineer, there are very specific roles in this industry that require those degrees as well. So, you know, there's two sides to that coin. And and I think the point is, is there's such a broad range of 
of roles needed in this industry that pretty much any background is is applicable at the end of the day, especially to both your points of organizational skills and leadership skills tend to take most anybody a long way in this industry. Yes, so. yes. And, and, and structural engineers, I would say if any young person or parent listening right now is, you know, guiding your child in a particular direction in engineering, I mean, we have, there's just a, such a shortage for structural engineers, such a demand, such a demand. They're so difficult to find, especially with these. Yeah. So that's a hot area. And our conversation today has been very focused on the designing and building of these networks. There's this whole other layer within our industry of the equipment manufacturers that are designing the high technology that we're actually designing and building into these networks. So companies like Nokia and 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 and, and the like, those those folks, those are hiring, you know, advanced degree engineers, right? They're hiring people with master's degrees, for example. So if you're very into the very academic side of things, there's a place for you on that side of the industry as well, right? Yes, yes. And then that's where the the technology component comes in, the technology knowledge, right? Because of the convergence and what we're seeing in the industry moving forward, that the the the, the future workforce has to have these these techno you know technology skills. Yeah. There's a I wanna shift a little bit before we wrap up. My experience, I, I actually was on a uh a panel, I did a webinar a few weeks ago for some companies that were, they wanted to talk about how do I prepare for a potential upcoming recession in terms of my business and trying to be prepared for, you know, if there's a downturn and how it might affect us. And a big part of the discussion I had with them is, you know, in my, my 27, 28 years in the industry, I can only think of one time over that period where we were truly impacted in a, in a like a completely shut the lights off recession within telecom. And that was in 2002 when, you know, the telecom bubble burst and MCI WorldCom like was, you know, was basically, you know, cooking their books and and what have you. But other than that, we've absolutely had slowdowns, but I can't think of a time when we were just completely stopped. Curious to to see what you guys both think from your experience as it relates to that. And because from my perspective, I feel like this is a pretty robust industry that doesn't get as impacted as other industries when slowdowns, but I wanted to tee it up to see what you guys think. I feel the same way as you do, Dan. I I look at it this way, right, in, in a very simplistic view, that everybody wants a cell phone, right? And, and everyone feels like they need a cell phone just as much as they need food, air, water, housing. So it's very important to people. And because of that, again, I know there's so much more to our industry than just you know, a cell phone, right? And and there's, you know, IoT and, and automation and, and AI. And I mean, the list goes on and on. But, but that's, you know, I, I try to keep things very simple, which is, okay, being in an industry that, that produces something that everybody needs and wants and will sacrifice to get seems like it could potentially be safe during a recession. Now, there's nothing that we can guarantee there. But I do feel very comfortable in this industry moving forward the next two to three years. Yeah. What I about mean, you, Wayne? My insight. Yeah, my insight to it would be, so 20 years in the industry, I haven't really seen a lot of recessionary downturns. It, it is different to our discussion earlier when you have tight margins, because the industry went through a growth period where margins did shrink, you know, and when industries mature, they commoditize some of the, some of the resources. So I do think we'll have a tough, I don't want to call it a recession, but we're going to have, you know, a come to this is what wage looks like now. And this is what it's going to be. I don't think you get to pull back those type of increases. Just like you mentioned, I've seen $20,000 increases that weighs heavily on those kind of companies. And so whether it's a full blown recession or not, we're going to have some efficiency things that we're going to have to solve as an industry. I think the hard part about the industry and, you know, and I'm going to say this and this will probably bite me, but, you know, just because you pay more wages don't mean you get more production. And a lot of times I think for years we've kind of paid for productivity but this kind of where we're at today, that's not the case. We're going to see wages increase without 
a, a, a vast amount of input improvement. And so it's going to take a while for the industry to reset itself. I don't care if it's Verizon, AT&T, or just the small guys like us building it. Those things do filter out and they will have an impact on how you run your business. And I, do you come out the other side? You do. I, I like what you've said about the training and the different ways to get people in the industry. I think as a culture, we just have to decide, you know, we all have to get behind. We need the tradespeople out there doing it, whether it's telecom or any of the other critical infrastructure things that you mentioned for your home or living. So I think the opportunities here, you know, how we respond to it and how you solve your own internal issues is, you know, that's, that's a whole nother subject, I guess. Yes. One other thing that, that I wanted to mention is that employees and, you know, people in general, they are getting a little nervous, right? They're getting nervous about the economy, about a, a recession. They see all the layoffs happening around them and, you know, they're starting to hold on to their jobs, right? We, I did say earlier that 40% of workers are thinking about leaving their jobs in the next six months, but I didn't say they're going to, okay? So listen closely, listen closely. Here's what I think is going to happen. So they're thinking about leaving their jobs. They're not happy. They're not engaged, but they're going to stay. And here's what they're going to do. It's called quiet quitting. Quiet quitting is going to become even more popular as we move toward recession and through it because people are nervous to leave. And so they're going to sit there and do the bare minimum and be disengaged or not be as engaged. And you may not be able to see it as an employer and you may be too busy, you know, really doing like exactly what Wayne said was just really looking at keeping your business in a good place so you can get through it. But what employers need to do more than anything in the next 12 to 24 months is focus on culture and engagement and keeping the people they have engaged and happy and in a good place and productive because that is going to be what's going to get you through. Yeah. Wow. And I, and and what you talked about, you know, in my business, we tried to create a meritocracy meritocracy type of culture which is you move up the ladder and you move up in pay as a function of the productivity you, you create and uh, and about how much you put yourself out there to learn and, and kind of pull yourself up the ladder versus someone else pulling you up the ladder. Right. And so I still believe to this day, that's one of the things I love the most about this industry is that this is an industry where hard work and proactively learning will always allow you to move up the ladder. I've never seen a situation where someone that's not willing to put in that, that is willing to put in the work does not advance their career. And so I'll always be partial to this industry because this is an industry where working hard, teaching yourself things, being a leader almost always pays off in career advancement. So I don't know what you guys think, but but that's always been been my take on this industry. Yeah, I I, I agree. And you know, and to the quiet quitters out there in the world, I always say this. And you know, is it people worry to your point, Carrie? You know, like are we going to have it? We see the layoffs, and they and they they kind of hold. I better save some of this <laughs> to Dan's to Dan's point of it, man, when you perform, you can do anything you want. And the opportunities always exist. People ask me in our, you know, in our side of it, because we're a project management construction. What am I going to do next, Wayne? And, you know, what I try to always encourage is, hey, keep your eye on the ball today. Let's perform today. Because when you do, there's opportunities in the future. And it's just, I've never not seen that happen in my years of executing the work. So, you know, to, from from my last piece of it, I, I see it as a super great opportunity. It is a great career path. There's all kinds of avenues from infrastructure and construction to software and to, you know, all of the new technologies that are coming out. So I think, I mean, you know, it, whatever your your gifts are or whatever you want to pursue, you can do it in this. You can. Yes, I, I believe that. And, you know, speaking to to people, you know, you said for the quiet quitters out there, you know, really looking at it from an employee standpoint and, and the person who is sitting in the seat when you focus on being productive. And I call it bloom where you're planted. 
bloom where you're planted and, and look at your situation and say, okay, how can I make this great? How can I change my perspective to really be productive, make this great where I am, talk to my leadership, be honest, be open, tell them what's working, what's not working, and be that person that stands out and stands up during this difficult time. And you will, you will, will, will go to the next level. Yeah. Awesome. Carrie, well thank said. you so much for your time. Really good input. Your perspective, I think, is is a very, very helpful for Wayne and I, and hopefully for our listeners. Tell us, so I mentioned at the onset, you have your own podcast. Tell us about how people can find your podcast, a little bit about what it what it covers and how uh, our listeners can connect with you and Broadstaff. Yes, so my podcast is 5G Talent Talk, and it can be found really anywhere that you find podcasts on Apple, or our podcast lives on RCR Wireless News, and that's, I believe that's just rcrwirelessnews.com, I believe. And we also have a website, broadstaffglobal.com, where you can find out everything about Broadstaff as well as about the podcast. In the podcast, I typically interview leaders in the 5G ecosystem. We talk about tech. We talk about talent. We talk about culture, retention. We, we just really have discussions about a little bit of everything. And it's very similar to what we've talked about here today. So I truly appreciate you inviting me on. I've had a blast. I hope that we were able to really make a difference for someone out there today. Perfect. Well, thank you. Yeah, I've enjoyed the conversation. It is it is exciting. We, we are lucky to have worked in such a great, thriving industry. Oh, wait, I have to say one more thing. The people in telecom are so cool and so wonderful. Like, they're not jerks. And that's the last, that's, I won't talk anymore, but that I have to say it. They're amazing. Some of my best, best friends are, you know, in telecom and it's, they're, we're good people. So anyway, that's it. <laughs> well, anyway. couldn't, couldn't agree more, Carrie. I would, I would echo that sentiment. So, well, thanks again for, for, for joining us. Thanks to all our listeners for, for listening in as always, as always, you can find us at 5gguys.com, connect with Wayne and I on all the social platforms as well. Love to get your feedback. It's the feedback you give us as listeners that allows us to come up with topics like today's topic and guests like guests like Carrie. So thanks for tuning in again. Until next time, thanks for joining us. Peace. Thanks for listening to the 5G Guys. For more resources and to connect with Dan and Wayne, check out their website at 5gguys.com. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that follow button